I, I think it's time to start. So since you're all here on time, uh, we shouldn't hold this down waiting for more people to come. I think this is the biggest ever Drupal 8 uh, initiative status update that I've had, which is amazing. There's a lot of interest. I, I, I hope you'll get a lot out of it, and I hope I will get a lot out of it. Um, I'm working on this since I'm uh, Gabor Hoichi. I'm working for Acquia, and Acquia is paying a tiny part of the work that I'm doing here. Acquia is sponsoring a tiny part. Uh, most of it I'm doing in my free time because I love making Drupal more multilingual. Um, I do. Uh, I started with uh, Drupal in uh, 2003. That was nine years ago. And the reason I started with Drupal was because um, I found it a great system, but I needed to contribute to Drupal. I was, a, I was required to contribute to Drupal because I've had issues with translating Drupal to Hungarian. And uh, I have issues ever since. So, um, <laughs> so it's either a hard problem to solve, to translation or, and language support uh, in general, or, uh, or I'm not good at it. Um, we'll see. Um, I wanted to um, start this off with a live demo of Drupal 8, uh, because I think there's a lot of exciting stuff that we did in Drupal 8, and it might fail at places. I hope it will not fail completely. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that's already in Drupal 8, and uh, the team is working on this, has uh, put in a lot of hard hours. Uh, we burnt out a couple of people on this, so um, um, already. So, um, so I hope we, you will appreciate this. And then we'll talk about the uh, rest of the stuff that is, might be even more stuff that we still need to do in the remaining three months until Future Freeze. So um, let's get this going. So uh, the first thing when you, when you start to install Drupal 8 is the install screen is not very visually visible. But if you've been installing lots of Drupal sites, you will notice that the first step when installing Drupal 8 is choose language. That was the second step. So you uh, choose language right away. And we also pre-select your preferred language based on your browser preference. So this detects that I prefer Hungarian and it, and it um, chooses Hungarian for me. Now let's install it in English because um, that lets me to uh, introduce you to this piece by piece. Otherwise the installer and user interface in Drupal 8 is not much different than in Drupal 7. So you could be mistaken um, to say that this is Drupal 7 quite easily. Uh, there's a lot of work going on to make this uh, different and better at several places. <clears throat> but that's not the focus of this talk, so I'm just going to do the simple whatever UI installation. So that was the, our first change. And the second change that we made is that we moved all the language-based system functionality into a module of its own. So we now have a module called language uh, very simply, that when you enable, you get all the base language functionality, and we'll see what base language functionality means. Um, and we still have the locale module for all the user interface translation that's disabled by default, and the content translation that we'll talk about later. So now we have a language module which provides base language functionality, and the most important part of base language functionality is you can configure the list of languages on your site. So you have English by default, and now we provide three confusing special languages instead of one confusing <laughs> special language. So in Drupal 7, there was the, uh, what's the language neutral language. And people use that for all kinds of different things. So we broke that down to three, um, not specified, not applicable, and multiple. So not specified means that this could have a language, but I have no idea. So if you are aggregating content from somewhere else, but you don't know what language it is in, it's, it's all kinds of languages, then you could use this, for example. Not applicable means that I know it does not have language. So if it's a picture of a cat that has no text on it, then it's not applicable, because it's not language-specific information. It's a picture of a cat. And there is multiple, which is an opt-out, because we uh, suck at implementing this feature. Um, it's when you would want to apply multiple languages to something, but we don't have that feature, then you could apply this. So if you have like a PDF with user manuals that in Europe at least, it's common that you get a user manual for your latest gadget and it has five languages in there or 10, then you would use multiple. So if you have like a PDF file, people can download it, it has 10 languages in there, then you don't wanna pick one 
or you are not going to say it's not applicable because it has languages, you would say multiple. So we have these three, and we are still wondering whether to remove w one of them or two of them or what to do with this, but they are here. Uh, we don't have configuration to remove these from the UI at places yet. Uh, we want to make that possible because now you have these showing up all the time. Uh, language configuration is very easy. If you want to edit a language, it has a name and a direction, and that's it. Okay, so there's no path alias, there is no domain, there is nothing. But we did not remove that feature, we made it more intuitive. Uh, so if you go to language detection and selection, what we have, we have URL language detection enabled by default, which is what we suggest people to do. It's like go there, manually enable it, we have it enabled by default for you. And if you go to configure your URL language, what happens? ta -da, you have your settings there. So you can say what, pre what path prefix is English, or if you switch to domain, then you can say what domain is English. And it's only one place, so you see all the languages right here, all the languages you have configured, and it's much easier to compare them and fix issues with them. Um, so that's a good usability improvement, I believe. We've also improved browser language detection. We fixed several bugs. We actually backported that to uh, Drupal 7 as well. It's equally simple to add a new language. So if I want to add German here, then I can just pick this and add language. Um, it was, uh, this was a much more confusing form before. Um, if you want to add a custom language that's still possible at the bottom of the list, so if you pick custom, then you get all the custom fields that you can put in there. Uh, we are not entirely sure that this is the most intuitive solution, but it's very compact, and you scan the list anyway if you look for a language, or you might not scan it. So usability feedback, welcome. Um, yes. We do also have HTML5 language markup in the page. I'm not going to show that, but we converted the uh, XHTML language markup to HTML language markup and we HTML5 language markup, and we added some more of that as well. Now, base language functionality is not about setting up language. It's also about assigning language to stuff. So if you now go to um, content types, uh, you have the language module enabled. Now you can assign language to content. And if you just want to create an article, uh, there's nothing happening there. So there's no visible functionality here, but you can configure it. So if you go back to structure, content types, and edit, uh, people might remember in Drupal 7, there's publishing options. You need to go to publishing options to specify how you submit articles for languages. Um, that's not very intuitive. Now we have language settings. Um, and, you, and you have a lot more flexibility than before. So you can say what's the default language that this node type is set to by default, and then you can hide the language selector. So this means that these nodes, articles, will always be in the site's default language. You can also say it's in the current interface language, or you can also say it's the author, author's preferred language. So if you use stuff that, that people just submit, then they would submit in their own language, then this is a good setting. Uh, it also, current interface language is a very good default for sites where people just submit something on an interface and you assume that the content of, uh, the language of the content is the language of the interface. And it's going to show up if you unhide the language selector. So if I unhide the language selector and set it to current interface language and I want to add articles, then I will suddenly have a language selector that defaults to English because that is my current interface language. And um, then I can choose whatever else I want. So I can submit an article of this and submit that. So it's much more flexible. Uh, we've also made this language selector available as a, a form API element. Uh, it falls back to a value field. So if you implement this form API element and language module is not enabled, then it's just going to assign the language to your stuff. <coughs> to your stuff. If you have language module enabled, then it's going to pop up as a select box and it will allow you to select a language. So it's very easy to add language support to your stuff. We've also added language support to other entities. So if you go to structure taxonomy and edit the vocabulary for text, then you can say this vocabulary is in English, German, etc. And if you go to list, you go to add a term, then you can also say this term is in English, German, etc. We have also added language support to files, and uh, that does not have a UI to edit, so it's not possible to show to you. And we've also extended language support in users. So users can now have two different, uh, two different <laughs> languages assigned to them. One is their user entity language, which is the language that their user profile is in. And they also have a preferred language, 
that is the language that they get emails in and that the site displays them, et cetera. Um, in Drupal core, we unified that, we collapse that to one select field and we don't show two. So we, the user interface is the same as in seven. But if you do have that crazy use case that the user entity language is different from the user's preferred language, you can just unhide the form element that we have in core and then you have it done. Uh, we've also added entity translation support to search module that is not in Drupal 7. So if you translate um, content with the entity translation functionality with translating fields, then the search module in core will index those translations as separate pieces and the, they will come back from the results as separate pieces of content. I cannot show you that because there is no UI currently for translating nodes with the entity translation functionality. There are API improvements to the entity form system so that entity forms are now um, much more flexible and can be displayed in different languages and there's a lot more um, API improvements in that area. Um, but the, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, not done yet to all the way to the front end. Uh, I still have language module enabled, so one more thing I can do here is I can assign language to blocks. Uh, I know blocks will be reworked and they will be fancy and all that, but we can assign language to blocks right now. So when you add, uh, when you add a custom block and you want to have something, whoops, block entity Drupal time then you can assign language to blocks. So, and that means language visibility. So you can say this block shows in English and in German and whatever else. These three options does not make sense here, I know. Uh, we should have a feature to remove these where they don't make sense. Um, so then you can specify your visibility for your custom block and you can place it somewhere and be done with that. Now if I have a language switcher block enabled, I will be able to show that as that essentially works. So then I will be able to switch between English and German. So I've just put my custom block here and I'm on English and I, if I switch to German, that is still there because I kind of selected German, right? Uh, so if I don't select, that's not the custom block. It's the selector block. So if I, oh, it did work. Okay, sorry. It did work, but I'm going too fast and you are, you cannot even follow that. So there is a custom block there in English. If I switch to German, there is no custom block. So there's uh, language-based visibility. Um, and that's currently about the base language support. So we move that one, one layer down so it serves all the other subsystems. And one of the subsystems that it serves is the user interface translation. That's currently in the locale module. So if you enable the locale module, um, then you'll get more functionality. So you go to enable the locale module, safe configuration. I just did multilingual training on Monday and one people I've one thing I've observed people do and when I said translate your stuff is that they went to the language list and they wanted to click on something to translate their site. Now that's totally possible. So when you go to the language list, there's a summary of your interface translation uh, status and you can click here and you are instantly translating stuff to German. So there's interconnection between the translation screen and the language overview. Um, Yes, so uh, it's connected all together. Uh, there, it's also possible, uh, yeah. So there's also another problem that people face, that when you, have a multi when you have a multilingual site and you wanna make changes to the English text on the site, like Americans like to change logout to sign out, that's not really possible. So you need to add the custom English and then you <coughs> change that and then you already have nodes in English and then your site is a mess. What we have in Drupal 8 is you can go edit English and you say enable interface translation to English. You save English and da da, you can translate to English. And it, there's no need to add a custom language. Also, uh, if you don't want to use English on the site, you want to use German, you have German, now you can delete English. And English is not there at all. So it's not in the language switchers, it's no, never nowhere. So you can totally remove English. Um, yes, we've also improved uh, the language translation user interface itself. <clears throat> so when you click on English or German, now this will direct you to this will direct you to the English translation UI, and if you click German, it will direct you to the German translation UI, and it's all on one screen. So it's built into one screen. If you've used this screen before, it's one column your English text, and then the summary of translation status for all the languages you have on your site. Then you need to click in 
and then you have a translation form that you have all the languages there, and then you can translate this text to five languages. Now, the, it's, uh, uh, the 80% use case is that people don't know five languages. They know one, and they want to translate everything to one language, so we have a UI for this. So you can enter your translations here. It shows you that it changed the translations if you go to drink some coffee or eat some dessert, and you come back and you see what you changed. And then you can save this, and it saves into the database. So you can see there an edit it forward. <coughs> um, we also have a much improved interface for in editing plural information. So if I'm successful enough, there's already data, data for that. So you can edit the singular and plural forms all together in the same place. This was not at all possible in Drupal 7. The data storage model in Drupal 7 does not allow for this in the locale modules. It's not possible to back forth. Um, it's all in one place, so you can edit your uh, singular and plural forms here. Uh, we've also made import and export much fancier. Um, so import is a much simplified user interface now. You can just pick a translation file, like I want to pick one for German here, and then import it to obviously German. And now we take two types of translations. We take custom translations and we take non-custom translations. And it means you can take translations from the community which is files you download from localizedrupal.org. And then you can take translations from your internal company stuff that you want to override the community translation with. And this will protect your overrides. So it already knows that you have overrides in the system. So you can treat it as custom or you treat it as non-custom. And in that case, you can overwrite non-customize or override customize. Okay? So let's say I want to override everything in German because I just submitted some crap there. And if you hit this import, what happened previously that it uploaded this file and it imported all at once. And this is a big file. And if you have a server that's r that, that does not have an, uh, enough resources, this might run out of memory or your browser might disconnect or whatever. What happens here is we import this and it runs in a batch process and it reads the file in, in a running window and it imports the file in small pieces. So it runs in multiple HTTP requests, so it's much better for, uh, for seeing how it goes. And it's also much better for um, resource use. So now I imported German. Uh, you'll see that it actually works here. What we've also solved is uh, there's also a much nicer UI for, um, oh, it's now all going to be in German. <laughs> so, um, so we've also have a much nicer UI for, um, for when you have more complex things, like if you, I think this is Polish. So if you, um, whoops. Now there is a bug. So if you have uh, if you have more complex plural forms and you want to import it to that, I have experience importing in or working with foreign languages. I know the UI. Um, so you want to import this to Polish. <coughs> that has uh, that has more complex plural uh, rules, and we totally have the UI covered for that as well. Yes. So you go back to edit your stuff, and you want to switch from German to Polish. That's going to be all Polish. And then they have three plural forms. So we have plural, singular, first plural, and second plural. And you can edit it all together here as well. So it supports all that stuff. We have also have, let's switch back to English. We have also have um, some improvements to export. So when you export stuff. Oh, I import it to English. Oh, no, no, no it's, yeah, it's a language prefix system in my, yeah. Okay, so uh, I can export stuff as well. So there's some tiny improvements there. It's, again, a much simpler UI. You just pick the language, and you can uh, export non-custom stuff, custom stuff, or untranslated stuff. So you can export all the stuff that you customized for your clients and then import this on other sites as well. So that's also possible. And that's about it for the existing improvements. Uh, we've also improved a lot of the APIs. We have a nice clean language API, so you can hook into when languages are added, removed. We've improved the JavaScript support for uh, language contexts in Drupal T and Drupal Format Plural. We've improved the get text uh, parsing uh, process a lot, so it's not just the user interface. It, it's much nicer. You can visibly see how it works. 
It's also much improved on the back end. We decoupled a lot of stuff. So <coughs> you can uh, plug any other data source in here and just use the database um, submission process and take the data from somewhere else or vice versa. Uh, that's also possible in config. So um, that's about it for, for the language improvements we have so far. I think that's pretty exciting. What do you think? Good. Yeah, so the applause, I demoed this, but the applause goes to these guys there. Um, there's, uh, yes. Um, there, so you can see there's a lot of people who are helping out. There's a lot of people who help out once or twice. So those are like the small type people, the small type font people. Um, those who are like with bigger type are helping out more, and those who are bold type helping out recently. So there's up and coming people who don't help as much, but they are up and coming, and they probably grow out to uh, even better contributors. And we um, already have some of these people who left because they burnt out of all this stuff. So we need more people to come and help. S because that's all, all cool stuff that I've showed is nice, but there's a lot of stuff that we have still in the plans and it's not ready at all or is only half ready. Uh, so let's talk about that. So our initiative is structured in these four layers, basically. We have this base layer, which is base language functionality, which we migrated out from local module to language module and we migrated all the local specific stuff to node module, comment module, user module, et cetera. So modules are language aware by themselves if language module is enabled. We also introduced form API language support, as I've said. We are introducing, uh, we are hopefully introducing uh, language support on forms. So you'll, we'll be able to know this form is in this language. <coughs> and that will be useful to write uh, your own uh, code for that. Uh, and we hope to be introducing sometime later uh, admin UI language selection, so you can stick your admin UI to one language even if you have five languages. But um, nobody's, work nobody's working on that, so if, if that's an itch that's important for you, then uh, please work on that one. There are a lot of things I could not show in this demo, but it's already in Drupal 8. We are building in localization update module to Drupal 8, and we have a lot of those pieces built into Drupal 8. So what we did is we centralized the PO file directory to one single directory. It's not under all the modules uh, scattered all around. It's not um, that you need to download files to crappy places. There's one directory that's configurable in the files <laughs> system, the file, file system UI. And the good reason for that is that we can import stuff from there. You can put it into version control if you want to put it into version control. It's one file that does not interfere with the version control or the drush stuff with the rest of your site. It's not gonna be overwritten or stuff like that. We've also put in file tracking to core. So all the so it imports files from that directory automatically if the files are there for your language. And we put in tracking to core so that it tracks the files when they were last imported. And, um, <coughs> and it knows if it was already imported and it will not import it again until it changes or you specifically tell it to. There is no UI for this yet. And we are working on right now, especially Eric uh, in the middle there. Raise your hand, yeah, Eric. Uh, yes, is working. It deserves, I, it deserves it. So he's working right now to build in project identification. We're using, uh, we are reusing some functionality from update module. So we can identify your projects and version numbers and then download those files automatically. That's uh, the main missing piece here. So we have it, uh, in the installer, we have file tracking with centralized to one directory. So the final step is to, down, to identify projects and actually download those files. And then we can show all the languages in the installer, everything, and you pick a language and it could download the translations from remotely and you can install Drupal even if you didn't download translations at all. And it will automatically download all translations from there on. So that's the plan, we need more people to help with that. We have pieces missing as I've said. Um, yes, and then there's content language translation and some work is going on there as well. And this part needs a lot more help. I posted a blog post about it two weeks ago and it had no effect whatsoever <laughs> in new people helping out. But I try to make scary remarks about what's gonna be missing and what's gonna be hard for you when you're gonna try Drupal 8. 
So I think it's worth it to like get involved now because then it's going to be a nice and shiny system. If you're not involved now, then you'll, be, you'll need to use Drupal 8 later unless you leave Drupal, of course. And then you'll suffer, OK? <laughs> so if we solve this, then you will not suffer. So what we have there is a lot of modules in Contrib. Um, content translation is in core. And then entity translation is a UI in Contrib for a core feature. And we want to unify this and make this better. And I will have some more to say about this later. And our other area of work is configuration language and translation which is a t totally different area in Contrib. It's implemented by the variable module that stores uh, different variables and by the IETNAN module that stores uh, all, all kinds of other language stuff with text groups in core. And that uses some core functionality and IETNAN modules. Um, and there's a lot of modules to enable a lot of different user interfaces. So what we are aiming in Drupal 8 is to work with the CMI system to have this done and I will um, have more to talk about this later. So the so we are very good in the language area. As, you, as you've seen, the base language area, we are very good. The, the interface translation localization area, we are pretty far ahead, but we need more help. And the content and the config area, we need a lot more help, a lot, OK? So there's a lot of things there that might not happen if you're not helping out. So content language and translation, uh, the problem there is there's this nice core module called node translation that works like this. It has a node that you say is German node. And then if you enable this module, then you can enable content types to have translation support. And that means that you can assign, you can relate other nodes to, um, to nodes. So you can say the German nodes translation to English is this one, and Italians that one, and you can have freestanding nodes that don't have translations, of course. So that's a core functionality. The problem with this is that a lot of modules don't support it because um, if you are like selling products, then you don't want to sell a German translation version of this product and an Italian translation version of this product. Or if you are taking signups or, or you are running organic groups, you don't want a German version of this group and an Italian version of this group unless you want language specific groups, obviously, um, or language specific signups. Or you want to take language specific votes or something. So if you really want to have language specific things, this is very good. If you want to have overarching not language specific solutions, this is bad because it's, um, it's much harder to, to use it that way. So Core has a field translation functionality which uh, works around this, or, work, or is the solution for that problem, that you have fields, and you kind of translate stuff inside the node, and you say this node is originally in German, and it has fields in German, but it also has translations to English and Italian inside. There's no different node. And you can say some fields are shared between these translations, they are language independent. Um, and that's not possible with node translation. So it's not possible to do here, but it's possible to do there. And there's a workaround here to copy around data and maintain that data. And, um, and that's painful. And that, that problem is solved over there. The problem with field translation is that a lot of things are not fields. So I've shown title here, but title is not a field in core. So you need to install a title module that replaces the title property with the title field. And then you still have the author and this publication status and all kinds of other things that are not fields and are not translatable. So if you want to have track different authors for different versions because you like want to have translation permissions, which is a pretty common requirement, then you kind of cannot do this. You can't use field translation, you need to do this. Uh, so so there's, uh, there's drawbacks to both systems. And the biggest problem is there are two. You need to choose. You like think up ahead whether this content type uses this system or that system. It's not possible to use both for one content type. So you need to choose upfront for the content type. And what's even worse is that Drupal developers need to learn both and implement both, and they do neither. Okay. <laughs> so we need something that's, that works out of the box. They don't need to care about it. And then, and then we can solve our problems with it. So the idea for Drupal 8 that's, that we are working on is to <clears throat> do property translation, and that's just a terminology change. Uh, everything's going to be based on properties, and then fields are going to be extensions of properties. So if everything is a property and properties can be translated, then we kind of solve this problem of titles, publication status, etc. And also, if everything is translatable, then you can reproduce this model, right? So if you set everything to translatable, then you have a node ID and then the language code and then nothing else is the same in the different language versions. 
so you get the same thing, okay? So if we extend that area to be more flexible and have more features, then you can reproduce both with one system and you only need to learn one system. You don't need to cho choose up front. Developers only, only need to learn one thing. So the idea is this. And we get rid of no translation altogether. You have one system and you can use it for both and you can use it for anything in between. You can, it's a lot more flexible and a lot more simpler. Uh, the problem with this is that it also looks like this. Um, because, because almost nobody's working on this. Because it's a hard problem. So what we wanted to try first is to make everything fields, make title a field, make author a field, make created data field. And there are very few proponents of this in the Drupal community and a lot, a lot of people don't like it for very valid reasons. So we are not going that route. But we need properties to vary by language. So this, the, like the, our core requirement is every property should be able to have different values per language. So we need to do this. So what we are doing instead is that we are migrating properties to a different table uh, from entities and we make them vary by language. And then you'll be able to vary any property by language. They are not gonna be fields as in you can remove and add them and rename them and that kind of stuff. But we need to have them be stored separate by language. And where we s started with this is uh, those two issues. The first is already committed, but you can look at the concept there. Uh, so that's the test, uh, test entity type that we started with, <coughs> that we changed the schema and we migrated the properties to a separate table. And the second one is entity field query uh, to be able to query this in entity field query. So the problem with this is we change schemas on every entity and uh, we, where's, where's Dave? We slow down core a little bit, just a little bit, so this. Uh, because you need to, you, you will have a join there. Uh, or we will need to maintain um, copies of data from the original table in the entity property table so we can quickly query it. So either we slow it down on inserts or we slow it down on selects. And, um, and we need to support querying that and there's queries in core that needs to be converted to this. So we just got started on this and we only have three months left and we need to convert all core entity types and we need to convert all core queries and we need to have an entity forms for this to make them work. So the only way that this can happen is if people rally behind this idea and we make it work. Um, so these are the two issues that you can have a better understanding of what's going on. The first one's already committed so don't, like, we don't need your reviews anymore unless you're freaked out and you wanna ex express your um, feelings there. Um, the second one is not, be, not yet committed. It's uh, still more work to do. It's about entity field query. And then of course we'll need to have everybody to embrace this thing. So like views in core will need to work with this new system. That's, uh, we'll, we'll I think fight this out whose problem is that one whether we need to convert or they need to convert or we'll work together on converting the uh, system to that. Okay. Um, it, it will be useful. Um, and then we have configuration, translation, and language. That's the other big part where we just got the first patch committed yesterday late night or it was maybe this morning even. I don't know the exact hour. That, that's a very complex problem and we are not solving the whole problem space but I'm gonna explain some of the problems and then we'll see what we are aiming to solve. So the, the best thing here for us is that core is being converted to this unified configuration system and instead of every place variables and contact forms and I don't know, site settings, et cetera, using different database tables and queries and all that stuff, the CMI is unifying the system to one storage system and one access API. So if we, the Drupal multilingual plugs into that API and supports language, then we finally support language to everything that is CMI, okay? So we are kind of expecting in Drupal 8 that things are either entities or under CMI. Stuff that is not entities or CMI will not have multilingual support in Drupal 8. Uh, things currently uh, in that area are aggregator stuff, uh, menu items and menus, um, custom blocks. So there are pretty core building blocks in core that nobody's working on to converting to entities or, or config. Actually, um, custom blocks are somewhat being worked on at the uh, Scotch Initiative, but they are, yeah, it, it's being worked on there, so you can help out there. Um, the rest, I don't know if anybody's working on it. I'm following the issues and I haven't seen progress. 
So we kind of expect stuff to be CMIO entity. If it's neither, then it will either keep the existing language support as for path aliases, but it will not get language support in core. Okay, it will not. Um, so this is an example for site config. Uh, let's say you want to translate your site name and your site slogan. That's a very natural thing to ask for. But there's not just translatable things. There's also multilingual things. So if you run a site, there's a default front page or not. It's a terminology thing. You don't want to translate the default front page variable, the path. It's not a translation. You replace it with a different path for a different language. If you're running a site and you have perfect German coverage on the site, but your French site is three pages and it just says, sorry, we are still doing this, then your front page for German is probably going to be like a panel or something, and your uh, French is going to be a node that says sorry. Okay, so there's two different paths. And that's not, we don't consider that a translation, we consider that multilingual. The reason for the separation is for all the stuff that is in configuration and is translatable, if we know the items that are translatable one by one, and uh, then we can translate them on localized Drupal.org for all the configuration that is shipped with Drupal core and the modules, okay? So if we identify the translatable pieces, then we can translate things. And that's gonna kill issues like why the hell is my forum vocabulary named forum when I'm in a foreign language? I think some of you might remember with that problem. And then there is this problem of widgets and validation in configuration like the logo image. It's a very simple thing, but it needs a file upload widget and it needs validation that it's not an evil file and it needs to be renamed, et cetera. So theoretically, for our use case, uh, all the configuration forms would be built from, from a description that's meta-level description, much like entities and fields are, and we would have this metadata of translatable and multilingual pieces. But that's insanely a lot of work to do to convert every single form in Drupal core to this meta-meta system, and nobody even built a meta-meta system for this to be converted to. So um, the most likely thing for the form area is to be solved in Contrib for Drupal 8 because there's, um, it's just insanely a lot of work. And we did a lot of work and we still have a lot of work to do. Another example which highlights an interesting problem is field config. This could be an interesting example for um, people who speak English and don't really care about multilingual because it shows the, the language problem there. So you have field configuration as a label description and allowed values and you wanna use multilingual features on that. So when you display the administration form for this, you likely wanna edit the original language version of this because that's how you submitted it and you expect translation to happen somewhere. And when you display the note form, then you need to display the note form in the interface language. It's the interface for submitting content, which could be anything. So I can set the interface language to German and I originally configured my fields in English. So we need to translate to German on the note form. And then there's the note display, which should use the content language because the notes can be in different languages. So when you display the English version of this note or the French version of this note, then I need to pick that version from the config. So when you pick config from the backend, you need to tell the backend what do you need. It's not like the backend will magically know that you need a specific language. We need the backend to be told that what kind of language do you need. So even if you are a uh, uh, developer only speaking English and you don't wanna care about language, if you wanna do configuration right, we'll need some information from you to tell us what kind of language stuff do you need in this configuration retrieval process. And the third one's very interesting is the contact configuration where we also need to have multiple languages supported but it's all in the same HTTP request. So you might wanna load different language versions of configuration at the same time or almost at the same time. So it has contact categories, recipients, and auto reply tags. And when you display the contact form, it's the interface language that you display the contact form with. And when you submit the contact form, it's still likely the same interface language. But when you submit the contact form, we send a bunch of emails. So we send an email to the recipient, which should be in the recipient's language, and we send an email to the, the copy to the submitter, that's a checkbox on the contact form, and that should be in the submitter's language. So we kind of need to use the contact configuration data in the interface language for uh, when the form submit comes in. And for sending emails, we need to pick different language versions based on the user's email preference. And we already do this right now. We kind of pass on this information, but Core does not support config, uh, contact configuration translation. So IAT9 tries to sneak in there and override stuff. 
And ideally, we would not sneak in there, but we would have a system where we are told the language and we would pick the right language information. And <coughs> storing that with configuration is also pretty useful because then we can um, store and stage it with the YAML files of configuration, and then you can push it to uh, up front to the, uh, to the live server, et cetera. So we are going that route. We are also going with configuration overrides. Um, that means that uh, there are separate uh, copies of only the values that you have in different languages. We need to work out the details of this. And we need contexts, which is a very overloaded word, but I don't know which, what word to choose here. For all the stuff that I talked to you before, that we need the underlying system to tell us about the language that it needs. We can just assume what language it needs. So there's a patch that went in a, couple, a few hours ago uh, to support this API, and it has some baked in assumptions. So we have a lot of work to do on this. It just went in to support this uh, thinking, and we need to validate this thinking, and we need to convert stuff to this thinking. And um, one good example might be the date format settings that uh, have language support in Drupal 7 already, so we don't need to add language support. And uh, they are like simple, uh, relatively simple settings. Um, and that's also, unfortunately, a bit unicorny because we still need to work this out. So the initial very first patch on this was just committed today that added um, this support. So if you want to get involved there, these are these two issues. The first one is the, I think, the one that was just committed. And the second one is about the metadata that we would need to be able to identify translatable configuration. So the idea is you have views and you have panels and all kinds of other things which ship with configuration uh, in modules if you export them and you build them in a module and you put it out to people. And we can pre-translate all the text in there on localizedrupal.org or for you and your uh, client process <coughs> with the metadata if we have metadata. We don't currently have that uh, metadata. And we don't currently agree on what kind of metadata we need. Um, so. So basically, we have this base language layer that's pretty much worked out. We have the interface translation where it's pretty far ahead, but needs more help. And we have content support, which is still kind of starting out. There's a lot of work that went in there, I, but there is a lot more work to do. And there's a config language, which also we have an idea how we want to approach that, but it also needs a lot of hands. So how we can help is there is a sprint this week. We had a sprint starting last uh, Saturday, Sunday. And there was uh, some sprinting on Monday. And we have a sprint on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so this week. So if you're staying around, then you can sign up on this form and it has, or in, in this page, and it has information on the location. And if you come and you sprint with us, then that would be uh, very much appreciated. If you don't have time now and you already have a flight booked, then you can get our IRC meetings every, every second week that we hold on Wednesdays. And you can come and ask questions. And there is a summary board of all the stuff that we are working on in this page that you can go to see this summary that I just did here, uh, just a short overview, and then all the issues categorized that, are, that we are working on. And there is a priori priority board there that you can see all the priority issues that we are working on right now. And the current version of the user tech cloud that I showed at the start to thank everybody who helped. And I'm totally over the supposed time for my talk part of the session, but we should open up now for questions because that was my session. Yes. Yes, it's already possible in Drupal 7. The, the fallback logic is pluggable. So you can write your own fallback, fallback callbacks. So the, the language selection fallback logic is pluggable. That where you've seen that there's a URL language, session language, browser language, default language. You can add any number of other language uh, fallback items there. And you can define that logic however you want because it's PHP code. So you can build in these assumptions of where things should fall back on based on that. And then the language fallback system will just use that uh, data and and uh, use the appropriate language based on that selection. Like for example, then how it works with the user, does it have like, where is it like, which place, which HTML, select this language, 
Yes, the question was what if you have multiple fallbacks and how you, how you manage that. The question is what you fall back for. So if you fall back on content, what we plan for Drupal 8 is that all the translations are in one node. So the fallback logic can happen when the node is displayed, which is much better because then you don't need to pick a different node. So it's already all in the same node. And that then you already have the node displayed. So you can do the logic there, which is just one node, and then you can pick very quickly from a short list of languages available there or not that, sh uh, well, if you just need to pick from 200, that's still short, that's relatively short in one node. Yeah, I think we should we should uh, talk about this privately because okay. we'd be good to take other questions and then we'll try, we can figure this out. Anything else? Anybody totally scared that we screw up everything or anybody happy that we are fixing everything? Yes. So for the patch implementation, have you had any revisions yet? Currently, we, it's, we do not touch revisions, so we just use the existing revision system. So when you save a revision, the API supports saving multiple languages at the same time in a revision. So we still do save every language version of the node in the revision at once because it's one node, one entity. So we save all the language versions at once. And the API totally makes it possible to change three language versions at once. So if you have translations and you want to fix something in multiple languages in your API, you can change multiple at once and it's just one new revision. It's revisions of a node, it's not revisions of a language. I know there's a lot of data. Miro Dittreker has a blog post about this problem the uh, revisioning problem and the locking problem for editing these when you have multiple languages and then the write locks and how, that, how does that work and what happens there. So Miro has a blog post about this. I don't have the URL handy, but um, he's working for MD Systems. You can look at the blog there. And uh, that has interesting insights. And that totally needs people to look at. Yes, I agree, yeah. Yes, we currently do that. We currently do that. That's the same as we do it in Drupal 7. Uh, the reason for that is that's the, that's the data about the entity that we load in. And then the data we choose to display about that entity turns out much later. So we load the whole data and then the data display decides what to display of that data. So that happens later. We kind of uh, don't, don't, uh, don't do lazy loading there. Uh, I'm not fully aware of the intricacies of the new property API that Fargo is working on, but it might or might not make it possible to do lazy loading and just load the, the specific language versions later that you actually want to access. So the question I understood is uh, if you use no translations right now, will there be an upgrade path to field translation if we are uh, burning down no translation altogether? Uh, the answer to that is we, do, we did not burn down no translation yet. And if we cannot solve the problems remaining for field translation, we might not be able to burn it down. And then we will have the same confusing thing in Drupal 8. Sorry, uh, that if you can help to get there, then we can help we can get there and then we'll be able to remove that functionality. So if we will remove that functionality, in that case we will add upgrade path to the field translation system. So you can upgrade to this system from Drupal 7. Uh, the existing entity translation module in Drupal 7 has an upgrade path coded for this. 
And since we will only have one system, we don't need to have any, uh, any cross-migration tool uh, anymore in Drupal 8 because you'll be able to configure on a property by property basis whether you want it to translate or not. And things that you don't want to translate will be sync. They will be same across languages. And things you want it to translate will be different. Yes. Yes. Yes, the trick is that Drupal 8 has a system English language that we do not show you, but it has a system English language. And it uses system English as a source language for all the code based translations. We did not change that process. So we kind of introduce the system English behind. And the English that you see on the UI is just a front end to that if you don't check the translation thing. If you check the translation thing, then it becomes all its own thing. The reason you need to check it is performance. So we didn't want to um, have any introduce any performance issues in this case for English sites. So English si so sites where you have multiple languages and one of them is English, if you do not want to touch any strings in English, then it will not go through the locale system at all. It will skip the locale system. If you check the checkbox, it will go to the locale system. But if you don't check the checkbox, it will not. So it will have the same performance as Drupal 7. If you check the checkbox, it will not, but it will have the same performance you had for your custom English because it's the same, essentially. But it's a much nicer, understandable UI solution for the same problem. Yes? We also did one with uh, the Utah language in part for changing the default browser after the creation of Nginx. Yes, hopefully, yes. Uh, it's not, so it's, it's possible to change it, but you're gonna break your site. That's the Drupal 7 uh, uh, status. Uh, so the question is, will it be possible to change the default language? Uh, hopefully, yes. So one of our missions is everything has language assigned explicitly. So one thing you've seen is that you now can ask explicitly say that this taxonomy term is in this language. And we did not have that information before. So the default language on the site in Drupal 7 is used as the assumption for everything that you did not tell the language of. Like a view, if you did not tell that this view is in English, then we assume that it's in your site default language. And if you change your site default language, then all the assumptions suddenly change, and you break your site because then you can translate from that language to the other language, and it's a mess. So what we are trying to do is, is to assign language to everything. Uh, that's a problem in all the configuration area that we don't really have a solution right now to solve, to like have an assignment of language to every piece of configuration. But ideally, that would be the case. So if you don't have that solved, then there is a country module already called fixed language negotiation that you can use, which allows you to change the language fallback to a fixed language without changing the default language. So if all you want to change the default language for is the language logic fallback thing, then you can ignore that and you can install this module and done. That's what usually people want to change their language for because it changes how the logic works, and it's, it's a country module that works. So you can use that. We might build that in core if we don't get to the other end, and then you'll be able to configure that. Anything else? No? So, you, so if some of you can show up on the Friday sprint, we'll be uh, hopefully able to, uh, to take tests for any levels. <coughs> I would love to see you there, and I would love to see you in issue queues and later on. If I don't see you, then just assume that a lot of things might not happen of all the shiny things that I've shown that might happen. The things that I should have actually already happened are there, and they are not gonna be rolled back, I, I hope. So all the shiny stuff that is there is hopefully, it will be in Drupal 8 already. Yes.
called Venza Translator doing translations. Translations for the Mata language, she added just for the for the two files. And the note is not uh, as full translation. And when I using, for example, this view and trying to uh, want to show only full translatable translation translatable notes, this mm -hmm. is impossible in that situation because in, in this with two tools, it, it's very easy, but with this tool, with, with the counter tool, can you open it? Or it's very hard to show. So we need a flag uh, uh, to show us that the note has been translated. Yes, the question was whether there's any solutions for showing that a note has full translation as a flag that maintains it. My answer is your definition of a full translation is your definition of a full translation. It's not the same definition of the person sitting next to you and then the one sitting next to them. Uh, there's different. So you can add a flag with a flag module if you want to, and then you need to have your own logic of setting that flag, whether it's manual or whether it's automatic. You can save flags with an API automatically. And then you can set up your views based on 